Pristina is the capital city. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a college city. A lot of colleges are there that people from like surrounding country would send their kids into. In Pristina, it's like either a city or part of the city like limits or it's like a village where you might not have running water. Um, so anyone that goes to a school in like a village in the hundred miles around it would send all their college age kids that wanted to go to college into Pristina. So it's like very young, young because there's not a lot of old people because of the ethnic cleansing. So um, a lot of young people, a lot of English speaking. I actually had problems because I served in Albania for six weeks and then I got transferred up and I was there for three months and it's a lot easier to speak English at after six weeks in the country than trying to first learn the Kosovar dialect, which is, it's like the northern dialect. A lot of people would speak English or if they found out that you don't speak Albanian very well, they would like grab their friend who spoke English. They didn't ever have the the communist regime. So Albania professes itself to be like 70% Muslim. Kosovo was like 98%, like everyone's Muslim. And Serbians were Christian and so it was kind of seen as a divide as far as religion as well. So even if you wanted to be Christian, it was not encouraged. It was discouraged to be Christian because that was a Serbian thing and Kosovars are, are Muslim. They have a, at least one military base, I think maybe two or three. Uh, my uncle actually served on one of the military bases there before I served in, Alba in Kosovo. At the time they were teaching the Kosovars how to defend themselves and building up their army and everything. So that was kind of interesting. They have like, it's called Bond Steel, I think, the big um, like NATO military base. And there were still like semi disputes with Serbians and, and uh, Kosovar on the northern border of it. The whole country is not very big. It's like, it takes like maybe four, four hours to drive across and some of the roads aren't so good and you could still get across in, in just a few hours. It's smaller than a state, it's like smaller than Maryland. As far as like catching up with like a Western society, it was way ahead of Albania. So it was a lot of big corporations in the cities. It was a lot more like businessmen and people trying to like get the economy off the ground, uh, national like recognition. And they were, cause they were trying to become like uh, recognized separate from Serbia. And so they're doing a lot of like publicity stuff. Like they hung up Honduras flags cause I think it's someone from Honduras visited. So they had like Honduras flags like all over the city randomly. Like we had no idea what they were. It wasn't until like years later, um, someone showed me a, a flag and I was like, I have seen that. They put them all over Kosovo for like two weeks. I have no idea why. And they're like, oh, it's a Honduras flag. And I was like, who knows, who knows why they did that, but probably because of some diplomat or something that was coming through. The first thing that we ate when we got in the country was something called a Turkish donor. Uh, which a donor in Albania is like a panini and a donor in, a Turkish donor is like a, like a spicy breakfast burrito. Peskrafits is something else that is super good. I missed that when I went back down to Albania. It's like a big like hamburger, um, but it's made with like chofte meat. So it's like a, like a different spiced meat that they put into it and they stuff it like full of cabbage. And it's like, like very, like with like a, a lot of sauce. So it's like a very saucy cabbage with uh, like a big chofte burger and it's it's super good into like this big flatbread. Like we, we would eat one and it would fill us up and it was so good we we got to where we eat two <laughs> for lunch because they were, they were super good. Their burek was pretty good as well. If you get a Kosovo, Peskrovic, burek, Turkish donor, I think that's what we ate probably four out of seven days of the week. Souflaci is like the hamburger, like the fast food hamburger version uh, in Albania. Um, it's, I think it's a hero. I think that's how you pronounce it. J-G-Y-H-O or R-O. Um, so it's, a f it's like a flatbread and then they put, it's called salskosi in Albanian. In English, it's cucumber and sour cream sauce. Tzatziki. They put tzatziki on it and then they put, um, they have a vertical spit that they have like layers of either chicken or beef or pork on. So it's on a vertical spit and it has a burner on the backside. So as it spins, it cooks it and they just cut off the outside layers as it cooks it. And so it's just like a bunch of little greasy strips of meat like this. It's super good. 
they put that in there, they put like uh, onions or cucumbers or whatever you want, and then they put fries on top, and then they just like douse it in ketchup. And you, they give you a little fork. And so normally what I would do is just like, eat the fries with the ketchup with the fork, and then you grab the whole thing, and it is, it's super good. Like making me hungry just thinking about it. It's super good. Drinks were pretty good as well. They had something called Fanta Exotic. Uh, it's Fanta Exotic. I haven't seen it anywhere else. And any time that anyone I know goes back to Albania, they bring it back because it's it's just a really good, like Fanta is usually like not a very good like label. Like, oh, I love to go out and get my Fanta because it's like the highest end thing that I can get. But Fanta Exotic is like super worth it. And then their fruit, like it's like a semi, it's not carbonated. It's like a fruit juice, but it tastes like Jolly Ranchers. That one's really good too. Baklava is their... Is their dessert of choice. Uh, Tulumba is super good. It's everything, pretty much all their treats are they're like, it's like a cracker or it's like super sweet. Like baklava is like drenched in sugar. And Tulumba is like, it's like the size of a Twinkie and it's just in this like honey, like sugar, like fluid. That one's really good as well. Their traditional way of eating is put out a bunch of plates of different kinds of food and then you just kind of grab, you just, everyone has a fork and then you just like, grab what you want with a fork. So no one, like you can have a plate and if they know you're American and they know you, like that's the way that you eat, they usually give you a plate and then you can put stuff onto it. But the traditional way of eating is you just have like olives, meat, cheese, bread, cucumbers, all these different uh, items on the table then you just kind of grab and eat what you want. Most of it is super good. Dal. So dal is pretty much uh, yogurt and salt. The only way to drink, or the best way to drink thaw is you're on the beach for like eight hours, you haven't drunk anything the whole time, you have like the taste of salt in your mouth, you're just super thirsty and you walk like up from the beach and if you just, if you can get a cold thaw and you drink that, it's like the best thing on earth. But uh, outside of that situation, it might not be the best idea. So pretty much if you're super parched, it's fine, but it's traditionally, I think it's just an acquired taste. It was part of Yugoslavia originally. Um, and then it was part of Serbia after that. The Albanian country is like pretty horizontal and or uh, vertical. And then the countries that are around it, they each have a little part, like a little small section of ethnic Albanians where you have to go into that country then a little bit further before you meet anyone that doesn't speak Albanian. Kosovo is was part of Serbia. Serbia started ethnically cleansing it. like like some serious genocide uh, around like 1990 or so. And so um, Kosovo was trying to divide itself and become its own separate country. Serbia was saying, no, we're going to ethnically cleanse you. And so U.S. got involved under Bill Clinton and bombed Serbia and pretty much defended Kosovo so that like genocide would stop. But as a country, their like sensitivity for violence is super, super low. People that like um, saw their grandparents killed before their eyes, um, like there'd be, like Serbians coming to a village, um, most any male over 10 would be killed. The people that I met, their friends had like, had lost their whole family in like a day. Um, they would just, and then there would just be a mass grave where they were all buried outside of, outside of the town.